Yo, what's up, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Look, I finally took the belt and put it around me. Because I'm the champ. The champ is here. What's up, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the 23rd edition of the most original titled show on Facebook Live. Yep, simply called Zach Miller Live, where today we're going to talk about the juggernaut that is March Madness. And who is going to be the champ? Okay, I'm done with that. I'll put it back right here where it belongs. Bah! It's going to fall. We'll place it right there. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Michael Jordan edition of Zach Miller Live. Look, I I want to say this because, first of all, I love sports. But second of all, the belt fell. Yes, Roy, it did. But second of all, March Madness is something that, other than the Super Bowl, it's like the only thing that even non-sports fans get excited and into about. I mean, think about that. Every, <laughs> at literally everyone at your office probably talking about it right now. Everyone at your school, the schools that you went to. You know, it's just something that people are excited about. And so there's something so marketable about that. And I think it's one of the re main reasons why it is so popular. But each and every year, it doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter who's in or who's out. It's still one of the most popular few days, at least opening weekend, in the world. And no, those of you that are like, no, it's not an Olympic sports I'm going to convince you that it doesn't even matter about sports, but this is why you get involved with it. So first of all, it's something like a multi-billion dollar business in itself, the March Madness Tournament. But then there's something like billions of dollars spent on the gambling side of it, right? What's even bigger with it is the brackets that have come along with it. So you have your big businesses, your ESPNs of the world that have created, you know, bracket challenges. And then you, which back in the day, it was something crazy where you had to do these things and you had to fill them out on paper. Brendan Tompkins remembers this, you know, Brendan Tompkins hates sports, but I bet, he watches and gets involved in some respect watching March Madness over the next few weeks. He's probably filled out a bracket. His company is probably doing some sort of tournament around it. It's just something that it doesn't even matter that it's a sport, but people are just so infatuated by it. So it literally is for anyone because of the things that these medias have put together, what these offices are doing. They gamified this few weeks, this tournament. And it's something, it's something that so many people get excited about. Yeah, even Barack Obama's bracket, right? It just happens. I mean, not everyone loves sports, and that's okay. But for some reason, many reasons, they get excited about March Madness. The opportunity to pick mascots or team names or, or picking the colors, which so many people do as a strategy. But the whole bracket thing, the whole gamification piece for just the random, you know, general public person that doesn't watch sports is ingenious. And it's so, it has, helped make this tournament so much bigger than it once was. So quickly, for those of you guys who don't know, it's 68 teams that make it. There's like 35 automatic qualifiers, which are from the divisions or the conferences that each of those teams have won a series of games for. 
Then there's a bunch of at-large teams. I can't remember the number. I think it's something like another 34 or something like that, 33 that get in, that a committee puts them in. Then they take the 64 teams or the 68 teams and basically put them into a one-and-done or lose-and-you're-done tournament, right? And so there's four – There's I think four play-in games is what they call it. So then the 64 each has 16 teams um, seated from 1 to 16. So like, um, I don't even, I think, or Radford I think is like a 16 because they're not a very good sports team. Sorry, Radford. And then you have like, um, I don't know, like a Kansas is, is a number one. And so they do that in four different quadrants or four different leagues. And so everyone gets to pick. If you guys have never seen these brackets, I don't know what you're doing with your life. But they... You know, people get to pick who they want. Now, what's crazy is a lot of people will just pick the one seeds because they that's what they think they want to do. I think that's only happened once where all four number one seeds actually have made it to the final four, which is another thing that's crazy. So they have this tournament that is super exciting for the first two days. Starts tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, right? Then, and people actually take off of work for this. Right, they'll go to bars. They'll be watching it at work. Uh, these, uh, I guess, the CBS network has created this boss button where you can be watching the games, but then press a button and it goes to an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, all these things are, are are super smart. But so everyone's hyped up about you know the 64 teams that are in, and then the first set of games are going to be tomorrow and then Friday. Okay, then the excitement is still up, but it's. It's not as exciting, I guess, right? And so it, it just, the um, people aren't as pumped up about it because, you know, for the first few games, I think first few days, I think you're getting 16 games and 16 games, something like that. And it's just a lot, a lot to to handle. It's exciting. There's buzzer beaters, there's upsets, it's craziness. You know, no 16 has ever beaten a number one seed though. That's the only thing that's never happened. I actually think it's going to happen this year. I think the team that's going to lose is Kansas. And I can't remember who they're playing, but I believe they are going – they're going to lose to Penn. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I think it's Penn beats Kansas as the first 16 versus one. You heard it here. It's going to happen tomorrow. I think that's tomorrow. It might be Friday. But the point is this. So they play all these games, and then they realize that not everyone – not as many of the people that originally were watching are – is exciting anymore because their brackets, their – their brackets aren't doing well, which means that they've lost some games and other people have won. So the whole gamification piece is kind of going away because people have lost and they're like, oh, I'm losing interest. Then March Madness NCAA decides that they're going to take the top in each of these quadrants, the winner in each of these quadrants, and puts them in something that's a super well-branded thing called the Final Four. So get a lot of hype at the top. Get people to watch, gamify it. Then people start losing interest because they're losing. And then they do this other thing where they kind of pivot, even though it's not really pivot. They just start marketing this other thing going final four and they bring everyone back in again. So the final four is kind of like the Super Bowl of college basketball. But what's crazy is this is all in like two and a half, three weeks. But there's so much momentum and so many eyeballs on it. It's something that if you're trying to create something to go viral, there are elements of March Madness that you should be looking into because they have already done it today. I think ESPN alone has like eight, eight million brackets, right? And so there's, there's teams, there are companies, there are all these people that are consuming all this stuff, even if they don't like sports, because they basically made it super easy for anyone to do it. You click a button, you understand 16 versus 1, 15 versus 2, and you go with it. And people even bet money on this at work, you know, $10 pools. And so it's just really interesting that something that, and I know not everyone loves sports, but it's just really interesting that something that's so sports heavy, like the NCAA March Madness Tournament, is actually consumed by so many people that are not sports fans. And it's because of things like the brackets. 
people call in sick, like the diehard sports fans call in sick. I remember when I worked in TV news, I used to do that. That was awesome. That's why I started a business, so that I could just stay home and go to the bar on March Madness week. I'm kidding, but that would be pretty funny. I mean, it's kind of a supply and demand thing, right? Where like you just get all this stuff super quick, and then it goes away. But you're pumped up about it every year. And it doesn't matter if you like the teams or not in the tournament, or your team didn't make it. Like The tournament always delivers. And it's going to deliver this year. Like It, it just happens. And people are excited about it. So we're talking about March Madness and how the spectacle is actually something that is consumed by so many more that aren't just sports fans. And I think that's something that as you're thinking about working on your brand or marketing or building a business or building something for the future, be thinking about virality moments, if that's the word, viral moments, right? And so it's something that is so impactful on so many. And there's just the gamification pieces on it. I mean, think about this. People fill out, used to fill out printed brackets. I mean, that's probably what got me into sports. I was like, ooh, I like this. What's up, Dave? What's up, Tim? Brendan? Roy? How you doing? Who do you guys have in your final four? Would love to know that. We'll go over mine in a minute. Just simply tell me in the comments who are in your final four. Um, but think about this. Like the Super Bowl, it's the commercials. So think about how these big sports games or events have actually got gotten more non-sports fans attached to that game. You know how many people who hate football tune into the Super Bowl for two things. Not the game, right? The commercials and the halftime show. I mean, think about that. The More people watch the Super Bowl every year than any other thing on TV. Every year. And you got hundreds of millions of people that are involved in March Madness who hate sports too. And so what can you be doing to gamify your brand or your personality, maybe not your personality, but the thing that you're working on so that people can do it. Like Foursquare, when they were a big thing, it was about becoming the mayor of wherever you're at. And people got excited about that. And so even the people that are not super in love with a sport love March Madness because their non-interest is introduced to something that allows them to play along even if they don't understand it or don't like it and maybe even win some money with it so a couple other things so you know you have your alumni so people that went to a school get excited about their school there's a lot of uh, something that makes the tournament really good is you got a lot of nobody universities that are able to play sometimes win big games right so i think let me let me confirm this but i believe it's i believe it's radford is a 16 seed right so it's it's such great marketing for these schools too because so many people have never heard of these schools yet they learn about them because of march madness all right so i have a couple of brackets i'm going to do the one i'm going to tell you guys the one off of some of my predictions from earlier in this year. Brendan picked Duke. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna go over my bracket right now. Actually, I'll just screen share this. So here is my bracket. As you can see right here, I have, and actually in this one, I don't have what I said earlier. I do think Kansas loses the pen now. I should probably change that. I do think this happens. Maybe I'll change it. You know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do it live right there. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I mean, look how easy this is for anyone, right? First of all, ESPN is getting your email, so then they can upsell you other things. They're, you're entering for cash and cars. I mean, the gamification has been 
ridiculous. And it's, it's just, it's amazing, really. It's amazing if you think about it. I thought you guys could see my face when I was doing this. I guess not. doesn't matter. Anyway, so my final four is UVA, Xavier, West Virginia, Michigan State. Okay. I have West Virginia beating Xavier. Woo! I have to pick that school, right? Um, in the national championship, winning 67 to 53. Okay. So I have UVA and Xavier. Uh, some big upsets that I have, if you're wondering. I have Loyola, Chicago, an 11 seed, getting to the Sweet 16, but then not getting past Cincinnati. Cincinnati's a good team, too. I have Dave Ritt's dad will be happy about this. I have Purdue versus West Virginia in the Lady Eight to go to the Final Four. And I have Auburn, Charles Barkley's alma mater, versus Michigan State. Remember, I just changed this because I have Kansas losing to Penn. Crazy, ridiculous pick right there. This is the year it happens, and Kansas is the one that loses the Penn. You just saw me do it right here. I just changed it. I had Kansas. And when I first made this bracket, I had Kansas in the Final Four or into the Elite Eight. Nope, it's not going to happen. They will lose to Penn. And Penn, you know, maybe even Penn should get to that second round too. That would be crazy, but NC State's a decent team. I think they'll get there. Uh, so then we got Duke, Michigan State. I think they played earlier in the year, but um, Sir Trips a lot is going to use his hips, Grayson Allen, and probably get thrown out of the game. That'll be hilarious. Can't wait to see that. Uh, and then Xavier versus Michigan. Michigan, John Beeline, you know, those teams are really built for the tournament because people, it's hard for them to play against them. And then I have Providence beating UNC, San Diego beating Houston. Houston's a hot name right now. I don't think they're going to make it far. Uh, and then, oh, I do have Virginia Tech beating Alabama. So for all my Virginia Tech fans, I, look, West Virginia has a really tough road. Um, oh, look, I already had St. Bonaventure. That's so good. I'm so happy for that. I have them going far. Look at that. Boom. But then losing to Purdue. All right. So you see my bracket there. My final four, UVA, Xavier, West Virginia, Michigan State. So if you remember a few months ago, and thank you guys for being here, who's in your final four? How did you, um, I guess I can just post this somewhere. I don't know. So a couple months ago, I was talking about my predictions and I did not know how this would work out because obviously I don't know how the brackets are, but a few months ago, my bracket I said would be UVA, Xavier, West Virginia in a team outside of uh, fifth seed and lower, meaning like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think the lowest ever to win is a 9. I could be wrong, though. The So it just so worked out that three of the four of those teams are in a specific quadrant that is not competing against each other. Wonderful. Great for me. Great for my prediction. So then I can say this, you know, I've um, successfully um, predicted that they can get into the final four. Now, they still have to do it, okay? So what I've done, West Virginia is actually a five seed. I think they should be a three seed. I think a five seed is a terrible seeding. And there's the teams that got in are fine for the most part. Um, Oklahoma should not be in. I think that's a joke, especially not at a 10 seed. Um, I think that's, that's really bad for college. I don't think a team that hasn't won uh, away from home all in 2018 and three months. That's a bad thing. I think they've lost eight of the last 10. No, they shouldn't be there. But what I've done is because West Virginia is a five seed, I've gone and taken them and said, okay, they're going to be that five seed. So we have West Virginia, five seed. UVA is a one. Xavier is a one. Okay. Remember, I have West Virginia versus Xavier is what I was have been saying for months. But then I've added Michigan State since I already had that five seed around there. So those are my four. That's my final four. Those are the four that are going to make it to the final four. West Virginia is going to be the champs. We know what's going to happen. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. But that's my final four. And so you guys can make fun of me when I'm wrong. But when I'm right, I can say, ha, told you. But think about it, right? This is this is an amazing tournament 
that gets so many people excited on something that they might not even enjoy. And it's such good marketing. It gets so many people excited. And it's a cool thing if you really start to think about it. Like, wow, like they've really taken non-sports lovers and turned them into people that do. Who is your final four? Would love to hear who it is. Who is in your final four? Mine, the championship game, Xavier versus West Virginia. I think 67-53. West Virginia will win big win their first ever national championship excited to see that happen i will absolutely cry it'll be javon carter and dexter miles last game huggy bear bob huggins would probably retire right after as well but at some point it's got to happen so i got to keep saying it but i think west virginia is under seated they should be a three and i think that they can go on that run and win it all who is your Final four, my, mine, Michigan State versus West Virginia, UVA versus Xavier, two ones playing each other, and then a four, a three and a five with West Virginia beating Michigan State in a not so contested game. I think we'll win that one decently by five points or more. And Xavier, even at a one seed, super underrated. No one thinks they have a shot. I think they got to the Final Four last year. Great team. Cincinnati schools. It'll be Desmond Varner versus Zach Miller in the finals. And that's what I got. I'm sticking with it. I'm happy that my prediction a few months ago, I was able to have those teams in different quadrants. So my prediction could be possible. Look, game still got to be played. A couple upsets in there. I've already shown you. Let me show you a couple more. Like this is, this is what I think is going to happen, right? There's my Final Four. And let's look at some of the crazy upsets I have in here. So right here I have Texas. Texas getting in is big for them. I think they're going to show their coach. Can't think of his name right now. Used to be a coach at Virginia Commonwealth. I apologize for that. I think we're going to see Texas. You know, Loyola, Chicago. Tennessee's a hot team, but I don't think they're going to get there. St. Bonnie going far. They won their first game ever, I think, in the tournament. That's probably a lie, but they got in. They were one of those last ones in last night. And then we got not a, lot, not a ton of upsets. 11, San Diego, Providence. No upsets really over here. 5, first 12, whatever. There's the big one, though. Kansas loses as the first 16 over 1 ever. Actually, I have a lot more upsets than I thought. This is terrible. This Not all this is going to happen. Uh, I think Stephen F. Austin over Texas Tech 2. West Virginia had to play them a few years ago. That was not tough. That was not fun to do. So, Tim says UVA beating Michigan State. Look, I think UVA is a great team, and they've had a great season, and, and it would not be shocking to see them go all the way. Right? That's why I have them in my Final Four. But I think it's also possible. This is what I predicted. I think you have. I, I think that's a great prediction too, Tim. UVA beating Michigan State. So basically, you know, my Final Four, but the teams that I have winning, you have winning. You know, kind of opposite. So it's definitely. I definitely think those teams are in the Final Four. Dave, who is your Final Four? I haven't seen it yet. Eric Bowles, what's your Final Four? Brendan, who else do you have in there other than just Duke? UVA beating Villanova. Yeah. Everyone, see, this is this is where it gets tough. You know, you get these teams. If everyone starts picking the same team, usually it doesn't happen. Uh, Eric says UVA beating Villanova. A lot of people really like Villanova. You know, they've been the consistent one and two all year. What's interesting is that UVA was not ranked to start the year. Their first loss, I think they have two losses on the year, both to Virginia-based schools. Just kidding. So West Virginia beat them on the Charlottesville court. And Virginia Tech, the Chokies, lost to them and then beat them a couple weeks ago. With like one second left or something like that, or like by one point, you know, you could see all the Virginia Tech fans like, oh my God, we're amazing. No, you're not. You won one game. And UVA is still the best team in the country. Congrats. But you're not going far in the tournament. You'll win one game. And heck, 
Alabama probably could win that game too. Chris Hill would be so mad at me for saying that, but I just love to bet against him, and I love to see him lose because it's so fun. You know, anyone that loves Alabama, Alabama sports, you want to see them lose. You really do because they've won too much. It's terrible. So my final four, West Virginia, Xavier, UVA, Michigan State, with Michigan State losing and UVA losing, which brings up the Cincinnati squad, Xavier versus W. V. U. Ooh, hook them. Brendan says final four is Tennessee, Michigan, Purdue, Duke. You know, no number one seeds in there. Interesting hot teams in there. Purdue's been losing a couple right now. I think they'll be okay in the tournament. I actually like Robbie Hummel as a commentator. He's been fun to watch. He used to go to Purdue. Dave says UNC, Cincy, MSU, Purdue with MSU beating UNC in the ship. Wow. The Tar Heels going far I don't know. Tar Heels went far the last two years. They've been in the title game the last two years. The first year they lost to Villanova on a crazy, crazy buzzer beater shot. One of the greatest calls of all time. Archie Diacono, I think is his name, takes the ball from half court. He shoots it at the top of the key and he gets a pass. And I think he even banked it. Great, great call by whoever that was. And great game. Wonderful game. I just don't see UNC going that far this year. I think they're extremely overrated. I don't think they should be a two. I think they should be a four. They have 10 losses. I just don't think they're that good of a team. Yes, they have good players, sure, but I don't think they go very far, and I actually think I have them losing in the second round. That's why I love this, because we can debate this stuff, and who's going to win, who's going to lose, you know? Cincinnati, I think that's a great pick. Very underrated. They should probably be a one seed. Over Kansas. Kansas, actually, in my opinion, should be a three seed. I don't know why they're getting the hype machine of the number one. I think Cincinnati should be a one seed. I think they deserve that. And it's disrespectful that Kansas, who has had an off year, is getting more respect than a team who's had an incredible year with, I think, four losses, won the Big East, and is a really solid team. So I would not be surprised. And I don't, I can't remember if this can happen, but if you see two Cincinnati schools, Xavier and Cincinnati, in the final four can that happen yes it could so they could play each other cincinnati versus xavier those teams hate each other that would be an awesome final four i would absolutely be fine with that remember i have taken kansas a number one seed and a number one seed has never lost to a 16 seed and i believe it will happen this year kansas will lose to penn is that tomorrow when is this game 3.15. Yep, at 2 p.m. Oh, yes. Yes, it's going to be great. So at 4 o'clock tomorrow, you will hear me say, told you so. Penn is going to take down Kansas. You know, it's never really even been that close. A couple of games. Every, Every other matchup's ever happened where the other teams have won. Eric, very original. A bunch of ones in the most overrated team. UVA, UNC, Villanova, Kansas. I just don't see that many ones being there. I think UNC is extremely overrated. I don't think they're that strong of a squad. They've played well against Duke because it's their rival. But I think the ACC is overrated. I do not believe that the ACC has three of the tox top six teams in the country yet that's how the seeding has gone down with uva being one and then duke five and six going to unc or vice versa but i do not believe that that's correct i believe that the acc will not have a great tournament other than really uva and i think the acc is extremely overrated this year i think that the big 12 is extremely strong this year and a lot of those teams have a lot of losses Um, Because they all beat each other. And those schools are prepared for this tournament. And yes, I'm a homer. I went to a Big 12 school. I went to a Big East school. But now we're in the Big 12. But I think that you're going to see a lot of good things out of the Big 12. Because they are tournament main teams. Brendan, Tennessee, Michigan, Purdue, Duke. I think those are good things um, as well. UVA beating Villanova. I just don't see Villanova getting there again this year. Where do I have them losing? Probably pretty. I have them losing to West Virginia. 
I think that's a tough game, though. You know, I, I when I got our bracket, you know, at first I was worried about Murray State, but then I realized that they haven't been back to the tournament since they went undefeated in 11 or 12. Um, and so I don't love the 5-12 game because a lot of 12s beat 5s. I think we should be a higher rank. Um, and then to have to play Wichita State or an in-state rival Marshall second game, even though it's in San Diego, I think is going to be a tough thing for us. Wichita State's a great team. They should probably be not be a four. They should probably be a three. They're a top 15 team all year. Well coached. A lot of people had them in the final four at the beginning of the season. Could they make it there? Absolutely they could. They're a good team. So I think we'll we'll beat Murray State by 10 or more. West Virginia well. It's going to be a closer game with Wichita State. I actually think when we beat Villanova, we'll win by a decent amount too, probably eight points or more. Purdue could be an interesting game if they can get there. They, I believe, will beat St. Bonaventure, Son of Bitchers, Son of St. Bonaventure, and then West Virginia beats Michigan State and then takes home the championship in, where is that Final Four? San Antonio, Texas. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, that's what's so exciting about the Final Four is that or the March Madness tournament, that so many people are interested in this because March Madness, the NCAA, CBS, has gamified this entire thing. And so many people get excited about it, even if you hate sports. And that is what makes this tournament so good. And if your bracket gets busted tomorrow, you just say, whatever. On to the next. But that is my final four. UVA versus Xavier. Xavier going to the championship game in San Antonio. West Virginia defeating Michigan State to go into the championship game and beat Xavier. Do you guys think I should have been... Should I have stuck with sports? Am I, am, I, am I exciting about this? Did I make the wrong career decision? I did not. But if you guys like this, thanks. We're only going to talk a little bit about sports every once in a while. But I'm trying to show you how to think about sports in a different way. And I think I've done a good job of that today. Everyone can get involved in March Madness. Everyone can get involved in the Super Bowl. Brendan, I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of you. You've done a good job at picking your Final Four. No number ones in there. A three, a three, a two, and a two. And those are decent twos, right? You know, I just don't see Duke doing it this year. But it could happen, you know. I like Michigan because they're definitely a tournament team. They've won the Big Ten, which only which has 12 teams. They've won that two years in a row, the championship. Purdue was a hot team, top three team all year, except for the last few weeks. So hopefully they can rebound. I think did per no Purdue did not win the Big Ten, and then Tennessee they're looking hot. No one's picked Kentucky though, which is interesting. Kentucky, you know, is a favorite. They're hot right now. Who do they play? Kentucky. Kentucky they got a bad bracket too, so Kentucky would have to play Davidson, which Davidson is going to be a tough game. First out game that's definitely going to be tough, just because it's a five twelve game. And Davidson is going to be excited to be there. But then they would have to play Arizona 4, which could be a 1, really. Like, terrible seating there. Like, Arizona could come out of that. And then they would have to play a Miami, a Loyola, Chicago, Tennessee. It's not going to be right state. Won't be Texas. But then it could be a Cincinnati. So, I mean, that is a tough bracket. What is that? The South? That is the bracket from hell. That's the scary bracket. But watch, it goes chalk, so it'll go one, four, three. No, we won't. It'll go pretty close to chalk, though. Meaning it'll go one, two, four, and eleven, and then one, two, getting there. Chalk is what they say, like, is what's supposed to happen. How the seedings are supposed to go down. Usually, one bracket goes pretty, pretty by the book. But that's it. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Brendan says I did make the wrong career decision. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. So, of course, we'll have a recap Monday, I guess, looking at how the brackets look. See how you did. See how I did. I'm excited. 
I've never won this tournament, not at least on ESPN. I've been close before. You know, in like the top 100,000 out of 8 million. That's cool. Yay! So that's it. My final four. WVU versus Xavier. Virginia, Michigan State in there as well, but losing. And WVU winning like 67-53 to win their first national championship. And Bob Huggins would retire after that. Appreciate y'all being with me today. What's going to happen? WVU. Champions of the NCAA March Madness Basketball Tournament. Yep, it's going to happen. If you're watching this later, hit me up in the comments about your final four. Go. Let's go, Mountaineers.